Hey, it's your boy, Sergeant Hooked on Henshins. So, um, today's going to be a special video um, talking about the uh, first half of Season 2 of Power Rangers Dino Fury that finally dropped here this week, and I finally managed to make it through all the episodes. Um, find time to watch it, anyway. Um, and uh, it's some pretty good stuff. Um, I'm not going to go into too deep detail before we get into the video. Um, preface to this also, um, if you want to look back, I do have a overall season one Dino Fury like thoughts about everything um the last few episodes I didn't re review and just where I thought things were going to go in season two I think I made some pretty good uh predictions actually um one of the strongest being stuff happening with Centara and what her storyline in this season is um so uh season two kicks off to a really good start it leads off of the previous season and um Void Knight has sealed himself off in the room where Centara her tank is at and uh, she's been somewhat powered up with Spore, because they just need a little bit more. Um, and uh, I think, pretty sure. And um, he tells them through the use of, um, uh, I can't remember the name of the monster, but it's a monster that can like go through the internet and stuff like that, that uh, he knows of a, of a dino key through that monster. He sees that there's a dino fury key, a power key, whatever it's called, um, that... Um, is the fix it key it can like fix things and bring it back to you know it's full health and everything kind of like reverse time or he may bleach type shit and so um he needs that for his plan he doesn't he knows they're idiots and they'll just do whatever he wants so he sends out slide through a mucus and um wreckmate is back um and also uh the monster and they eventually do end up are successful in getting it back um and he repairs his armor with it and he also gets one more sporex to put into the machine brings some tar back and at first, she's really excited to see him. He's happy to see her. You know, we get to see him in a full human form, like without the armor on or anything like that. He's got this goofy civilian outfit on. Um, we find out him and Centaur are both aliens. They crashed their millennia ago. I don't know if it was the same time as the Dino Fury original team before the current team or not. Um, and that uh, something about um, the pain of losing a daughter is what they said, or losing a, 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 a child or something. So I'm wondering if the random theory people had that um, Amelia is Void Knight and um, Santara's, Tarek is his name, Tarek and Santara's daughter somehow might be true. My kitty's co-starring in this one right here. See her? Kitty, kitty. Egret. Egret. Kitty. Egret. <laughs> so... A pretty good kickoff um, here, and uh, what's good is that like a good chunk of the episodes still do have like that moral of the day thing in there, but I feel like they handle it better in a lot of this the, the episodes of the back half here, and they also really creatively use the footage. Um, it's within these first few episodes that we get Santara starting to her more turn towards being evil. She's apparently pissed at humanity and thinks it's humanity's fault that what happened to her. We don't know what happened to her, we don't know all the details. Um, neither do the rangers. Um, so, uh, like I said, he uses the key to fix his armor and everything, and he's all good. Um, and, uh, she ends up, when he's gone one day, um, she says, well, we have to punish him. Punish revenge? What are you talking about? I just want to leave. I'm fixing up a ship. We're going to get out of here and leave these idiots to Earth. We're done. And so, I like that idea, given that there is some honor to Void Knight, which kind of reflects his counterpart of Nada, who always did have a bit of honor to himself, even though he was trying to be stronger than Cole and whatever. It was the armor and the negative emotion inside of it that was making him do that. Um, but yeah, so Tarek slash Void Knight starts having these moments in different episodes where he starts helping the Rangers. Um, because Santara, at the end of one episode, I think it's the second one of the season, um, takes more sporks into herself and becomes Void Queen, which she's actually the, it's actually the Madame Noir outfit from Tokyo Um, and so anyway, um, he's really upset by that, doesn't know why she did that, and it makes him sad. She's like, I want revenge, blah, 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 and he's like, but, you know, we can just get out of here. Um, I think there's a moment where he shows her the ship that they're gonna take, and even Mucus is like, oh, this seems a little small to take us all off planet. <laughs> um, and, uh, um, she destroys it and like banishes him basically and so he screws her over by um the monster of that episode i think it's like two i think it's the second or third episode something like that um is like this like pumpkin-y like plant looking monster and they tell he like tells the weakness of the monster to the rangers so they can defeat it um we also get some debuts of different things we get the debut of the um mini little baby paka sword and then the mama um which they didn't know what's what it was at first the first ion recognized it but didn't know why it was so small and then um, we found out that somehow the mama had a baby. We don't know. It's just a thing. 
Um, but there's a lot of really creative use of the footage here because, like I said, if you don't, if you spoilers, if you've not watched Rio Soldier, you can stop it right here if you want to and pick it up in about you know, five ten minutes. Um, in Rio Soldier, if you didn't know, the character Nada ends up being the sole user of the guy's programmer for most of it, and um, he ends up um, becoming he's a really good friend of Ko's and he becomes an even better friend once they help him release him from like the negative emotion inside the armor and having control over him where he has control instead of the armor having control over him and so that's what this episode sentai footage does and the monster is that they destroy this monster and it um releases all of the like you know darkness and evil feelings out of the armor it absorbs it all and puts it in this guy and then they destroy the monster and boom it's gone so this doesn't really do the exact same thing we still see kind of that effect but it's not what it's doing um and we do get some really interesting little subplots here and there. Um, Ollie finally comes around to actually starting to respect Amelia. I do feel like they're going to be doing um, a bit of a romance subplot with them. They do seem to kind of have a thing for each other. Um, there's a, a, an episode especially where he's trying to help prove the existence of a ghost and it ends up being a magician that was doing an elaborate trick or some shit like that. But he genuinely wanted to help her. I think he's actually starting to calm down a little bit. Um, there's another good episode for Ali, the Pakazord episode, actually, where there's a scientist visiting he knew as a kid that his mom knew, and um, his mom's, like, traveling right now um, in Japan, actually, it's funny. She makes a uh, reference to the fact that uh, he says, aren't you scared about any giant, mon any giant monsters there, honey, Mom? And she's like, I'm having too much fun. Ollie, do you really think a giant monster couldn't have fun here? Like... Clearly a dig at Sentai in general. Um, and then he mentions that she checked out the Ishinomori Institute, which is a callback to Shoto Ishinomori, who created all of this, basically. Um, but anyways, the one episode has um, like this professor that he used to know when he was younger, his friend of his mother's, um, right, a friend. And uh, he acts like a big smarty pants in front of um, the professor because um, Amelia is talking about some brace that she has and magnetic energy and blah, blah, blah. And the scientist is like, oh, that's pretty cool, whatever. And um, Ollie's basically like a dick out about it. Like, oh, yeah, it's a bunch of garbage. Oh, okay, that's not real. Like, come on. And he's a real jerk about it. And um, he basically puts him in his place and is like, well, just because you haven't heard of it does not mean that it's not something credible. Have you researched it? Well, no. Do you know anything about it? Well, no, I guess not. Well, then how can you know that it's, you know, something silly or something that good? So I like that. There's a lot of really good episodes. I think they kind of listen to complaints people have with Ollie. Um, and did some good episodes to kind of put him in his place and help him understand that he can still be intelligent and have that be at like the forefront of how he makes his decisions without lording it over people. There's a lot of really good character growth in season two so far that I really like, especially with um, Ion as well. I'll get to him in a bit. Um, so we get the Pachazord. That was a really good episode, um, how that all came together. Uh, there's an interesting plot with how they get the Terror Freeze Zord. Um, and... Uh, it essentially has to do with Javi. There's a whole plot where he, um, it's where he finally proves to his dad that he does want to do music and he does truly enjoy it and he's good at it. And uh, he, um, there's like something where he's got to fill in for a band, for a band member of this band with this jerk singer that he doesn't like, comes up later, um, who's wearing the necklace, a necklace that the charm on it is the terror phrase key. And um, he makes a deal with him, he's like, oh, play for me and I'll give you the key. And he's like, all right, cool, what time is it, two? which is the same time that his dad's um, like medal ceremony is, which is really important to his dad. And so um, somebody ends up like recording it, I think like Izzy or something like that, and they're just like watching it, and her dad sees it. It's like it was like a live stream of like, a buzz blast or something. And um, his dad, the dad sees it and is pissed. And so he goes to confront Javi, and Javi basically is just like, Dad, you don't respect anything I do. I've had nothing but respect and love and support for everything you do as an officer. But you've hardly ever given it the time of day to really respect me as a musician and as an individual. And I thought that was really strong. I think that was a really good way to handle that. Um, I thought it was really cool to add a bit more to Javi because I feel like Javi and Ali are kind of the weaker of the team members, if you will, but they've gotten better in season two so far. So that was a really good episode and his dad finally realizes kind of the error of his ways a little bit and starts to be a little less harsh on him and more supportive. Um, he's still being supportive in the way he is to Izzy. Like, yeah, we gotta, you gotta train, you gotta, you gotta, um, keep practicing. Oh yeah, let's do a practice session right now. Like, you know, that kind of way, but he's still trying and I think it's really cool. Um, we also get a beautiful episode where Izzy, um, wants her mom to make her an outfit for the prom, but she doesn't want to wear a dress. And Fern, her girlfriend, also wants one. Um, that was the cool thing, if I didn't mention it in my season one thing review, is that um, they made Izzy a lesbian in this. There's a really great representation for that. 
Um, not only is she a, the female, uh, other female on the team, and she's green, but on top of it, she uh, like ripped the skirt off. Like skirts aren't for me. And so like a lot of like gender bias. Like get that shit out of here. Um, and uh, so in this one, this episode, the whole plot, they're gonna be going to like a prom or a dance, something like that. And she wants like a special outfit, but not a dress. And so um, Fern ends up dropping her off to her, opens up the bag, gets the dress, and she's pissed about it. So she th takes it and throws it in the trash. And then she gets a message from Fern like 20 minutes later or something like that, five minutes later or whatever. And we find out that Fern swapped the bags accidentally. That was her dress, and she has her outfit. Her mom made her a tux like she wanted. And so she, their whole plot, they have to like go to the garbage and they find it. And she finally comes to her mom and tells her. And her mom is like, you know what? When you were younger, I always used to think. You know, you used to be so good about helping me with, you know, my fashion stuff and making dresses and everything. And, um, uh, basically saying that, you know, she had a, a thought of what she was going to be when she was a kid. But as she grew, she saw her changing and that she, she, she learned to accept and love that. It's like, if you would have been up front with me, I would have been okay with that. And I knew what you wanted, but you just, you know, and so it was a nice little, like, lesson for Izzy. But also nice to see that her mom accepts her for who she is and loves Fern and loves her for, you know, being lesbian. And it's not any different or anything like that. Like, it's accepted. And it's super cool, the representation with that, especially at the end, the pictures of her and Fern together. Fern in her very nice feminine dress. Izzy in her, you know, nice fitting suit to herself, you know. It really looks nice on her. Really great episode for representation. I really want to see Power Rangers continue to do this. Um... Definitely would like to see, since they've done this, them do a male gay couple next year, next season, maybe. Um, doesn't it be two Rangers on the same team. Could be that. Who knows? But, um, so yeah, there's uh, a lot of good subplots with the team that, uh, throughout these episodes. Um, there's a really fun one where this monster gets uh, summoned, and you find out it's the... <laughs> It's the sibling of the one from last from season one, uh, Drachnarok, who the the gag of that episode everybody kept like he would say his name and everybody would just keep like forgetting it. So like they would just refer to him as hey you and he'd be like, My name's Drachnarok, yeah, whatever. And they kept forgetting it. Madam or uh, not Madame Noir, that's what the suit looks like. Uh Centaur slash Void Queen in this summons a monster to go after Tarek slash Void Knight. And um it ends up uh <laughs> it's the sister of that. Uh, she's like, Oh yeah, she's the sibling of had one guy we used that one monster we used to have anyway <laughs> um and honestly it's a pretty good plot line with um centara as void queen i wasn't sure how i was going to feel about that and how good that how well that was going to be put together but they do a pretty good job of it and um you sort of see where she's going with it i want to see why she wants revenge so badly on humanity like what the accident was that caused her to go into her coma and how they lost their child and all of that because i mean if amelia really is their kid then she would have had to go through some time warp or some shit to go to present time to be with pop pop you know um so i don't really understand that <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so, um, there's also another really good character focus episode for Ion, where him and Izzy find a, uh, it's actually an Area 62, which is where the villain base is, um, like abandoned vehicle or whatever, and in it is two briefcases. One has this collar on it that can make things grow whenever they want to, and the other one is full of money. And he finds it, and she teaches him about Finder's Keepers. And he's like, oh, it's mine, blah, 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 because the whole plot is that, like, they were riding bikes together, like BMX bikes or something, or, you know, cross-country bikes, off-road bikes. And he accidentally tapped her with his wheel and threw off her bike, and she kind of hurt herself a little bit and broke her bike. And so she's pissed at him. He's like, well, Finder's Keepers, you know, whatever, this is mine. And so he takes the money, and he goes and buys a bunch of shit. He's, like, being a real douchebag about it. Um, sort of how Canelo was, not really about money, but just very full of himself. Um, and, uh... Ion eventually realizes that, you know, it's it's just not doing a lot for him. And we actually Pop Pop is the one that brings him around and is like, you thought maybe some, some retail therapy might make you feel better since you were so upset with Izzy and Izzy was so mad at you. Um, and he's like, yeah. And he's like, it's not really helping, is it? And it's like, no, it's not. And he's like, well, it doesn't mean you can't always give back. And he's and Ion's like, you're right. So he starts giving away some of the things he, buy. he bought to a bunch of different people around him and everything. And uh, him and Izzy, you know, come together and, you know, they're better friends by the end of it. Um, so the bigger thorough line uh, plot here, too, is that um, there's a point where Zato um, gets a, a better, like, idea of where Rafcon should be. Gets there, it's not there. We don't know why. The spot where it's at is empty. But he does find another message thing um, that seems to be the other part or the second part, there's maybe three parts, four parts, who knows, of whatever message from Ravcon. Um, 
So I'm wondering if the, the, the plot line there for Rafcon is going to tie into what happened to Centaur and Tarek and them losing their kid slash daughter slash son, whoever, um, and all of that with the Morph Masters, all the timey-wimey goofiness with that. I don't know. Um, but yeah, that's still a developing plot line, which is still pretty good. Um, and uh, one of the ones I want to focus on the most, though, is Void Knight is without a doubt my favorite Power Rangers villain so far in the series. Like... Um, by the end of season, of uh, the first half of season two, he's become, he's edged more towards being a hero, but I like that, like, you know, although he never wanted to, like, hurt people, he was still kind of terrorizing people, but he really never actually, like, hurt a single person. I think he might have inadvertently hurt Izzy, but I don't think if he really thought about it that that would have really, he probably just saw her as an obstacle, the range is an obstacle, so hurting them is just, like, collateral damage to get him to the goal of saving his wife. And now that he has her back, her doing this whole turn of like wanting revenge against the world for what happened to them shocks him. And I like that. I like that kind of turn in him. There's a really good part of an episode where I think it's the one where um, Javi is uh, being accused of... Um, of uh, No, hold on a second. No, there's a little girl, of what we found out, that hacked into Buzz Blast and took control of their live feed or something like that. And um, he sends a little drone in there to spy on the rangers and find out more about what they're doing, blah, blah, blah. And um, here over here is him talking about it because he helped them a couple times and that they don't trust him. They're not sure about it. Like, he's really kind of been a menace to them, but that, you know, maybe we should talk to him. And Zato's like, no, he's bad, blah, blah, blah. Um, and this is the episode where we get Snag Eye, um, which is Udon or Udon, whatever it was, from uh, Rio Soldier who ends up guy sort you know, slash Nada. Um, and he has the same ability where he's absorbing the people into his body and all, all that. And he eventually gets all of them. Um, until, uh, Tarek is able to break, you know, the little part in his, like, I think it's either his chest or his belt or whatever, that breaks his power a little bit. And then he lets at least, I think he at least gets Zato out. And this is where we finally get the Dino Knight armor and Dino Knight Morpher and Key. Um, come to find out that he found that millennia ago somehow and um, used it to create his Void Knight armor and persona in general. Um, so his shield he's been using, which he uses a little bit more in this part of the season, um, season two, um, was actually the key itself. Um, I think he gets to keep the sword somehow, which I don't know how that works. But um, but yes, that was actually the more for the whole time. And he was like, here, I can't use it anymore. My power's kind of drained. You do it. Take it. Use it. So I finally get Zato using that and getting the Max Rios all red slash, you know, down our night armor. And it's kick-ass to see it again. It's my, one of my favorite suits. It's my probably my favorite suit in all of Toku. And seeing it again, you know, using the Sentai and original footage is awesome. So um, he kicks Uden's ass, you know, they fight another monster. And um, Tarek, you know, promises them he's going to help them, basically. He explains to them his backstory and that him and his wife had been had crashed there. And something happened. Something happened. Something, he doesn't really say what, but some tragedy befell her, put her in a coma. And that's why he was getting the gathering at Sporex, to power the machine to bring her back. But once she got up, she decided to, once she awoke, she decided to take revenge on humanity and decided to absorb the, you know, Sporex energy into herself, becoming Void Queen. And so um, they're like, oh, we never knew that. And he's like, I know, I should have told you from the start. And I like this, that he really honestly thinks about this, that he should have said something to the Rangers. And that, sure, they may not have believed him then because he'd been such a tremendous, but it may have been like this, where it just takes a little bit of back and forth to understand where they're at. So I like that sense of honor he has, very Villamax of him, and I really like that. Um, so he's probably my one of my standout characters, honestly, in the show, other than Zato and Ion and a majority of the team. Um, but the cool thing with this season overall is that a lot of the characters so far have gotten to shine. Character focus episodes, dialogue, situations with each other. There's also a lot of original fight footage, which I really liked. Um, both battles that never took place in Rio Soldier and also like just filling in the gaps in between the footage pieces. Um, they even used the footage piece of when uh, Ko fights Master Red um, and Master Red uses the Max Rio Soldier Red armor against him while he's just in his normal, you know, Real Soul Red form. Um, how they do it though is we find out that any money anybody on the team who uses the power up becomes the Dino Knight armor, like the red one. Which I I guess is cool that anybody can use it, but it also I wish they would repaint it for each person. I don't know if they could do that to have, you know, a, a black, a green, a blue, a pink, and a gold. But it would be cool if they did. I think that'd be kind of interesting. Makes me wonder what they're going to do with the um, Rio Soul Caliber thing for, for, for part two, if they're going to do anything with that. Um, 
on how it's supposed to stack power level wise with um, the uh, uh, Dino Knight Mor Morpher and everything. Um, but it was cool to see it anyway. He basically works with him because um, at the end of the episode where Tarek did help everybody, there is a similar tragedy with him where he goes to leave and he gets kidnapped by Void Queen and brought back and imprisoned in the same like tank that she was in. And um, next episode, she ends up flooding it with Void, with not Void energy, with uh, Sporks energy, Sporks beast energy, Sporks energy, whatever, and makes him into Void King, which is just the Precious suit, um, which is kind of cool that they're using it that way. And so he does the same thing in the like in the Sentai footage where he's able to you know copy the attack, and they don't know what to do to counter that. And so he ends up training with Javi, and Javi uses the Dynamite Morpher, becomes the red version of it, fights him, and he's able to you know figure out a way to um, dodge it. And then when he goes to do another one, he doesn't have enough energy to do it twice. So, um, but it was a really unique way to use that footage. I was worried what they were going to do because they didn't have um, Zato didn't have the same friendship with Tarek as he as Ko did with Nada, so I didn't know if it was going to mean as much. And it wasn't as deeply meaningful, but it was about as close as Power Rangers was going to get, and it was an interesting way to do it because it was showing that Tarek started to trust them and that he really was like willing to put it online to trust them and for them to help him defeat his, his wife and bring her back. Um, and so uh, I thought that was really cool. I love that like the... The revelation that he used the morpher to like make his void knight outfit which to me is a call back to that that line of dialogue that zato says in like episode one or two like hey that's you know i recognize that armor that's ours blah 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 that's why because that was one of their original power sets to use and he stole it somehow um and it, i guess it can be headcanoned or assumed that he just um it looks that way being purple and everything and darker because he doesn't have like a dinosaur to attach it to or something. Um, my hope for the next part of it, um, as far as far as that all goes, is that um, we'll have him breaking out of the Void King persona, getting that all washed away from him, and somehow in some way the Riesel Brown are being used. Sure, it'd be fucking hilarious if it was Pop Pop. Absolutely, it would fit the footage being all goofy and everything like he is, and how Riesel Brown was goofy tripping around and being stupid. Um, but if they wanted to just throw that footage away like they've been doing a lot and using their own original footage, there could be some pretty badass scenes with a, you know, I don't know, Bronze Knight or whatever they want to call him, Earth Knight, I don't know, Terra Knight, um, to have him in the real Soul Brown armor if they wanted to. But I'm legitimately really, really, really excited for where it's going to go. I don't know when the second part of Season 2 is probably going to premiere. If I had to stake a guess, it probably wouldn't be till like, mid-summer, like, early fall maybe um i don't know how i feel about them putting it all out at once on netflix um i kind of feel like they should have done it like week by week like an episode or two just to kind of keep up the conversation with stuff because you know like one of my good friends balin said you know putting it all at once like this we're all excited right now but then two weeks from now nobody's gonna even be talking about it and moving on to something else so um but yeah so if i give I had to give like the first half a uh, kind of a grade or a number um, I probably would give it a strong 9 out of 10. Um, I'm really impressed the work that they've done. Um, definitely in the original fight footage, in the character department for character-focused episodes, the dialogue is better. The plots are a lot more tightly knitted together. None of the episodes feel standalone, and I like that. There are certain ones in Season 1 that could kind of stand alone and did nothing for the main plot, whereas in this one, I didn't feel that way. Um, I love the side plot stuff going on with uh, Rafcon and that whole mystery and the possibility that Amelia might be related to Void Knight or what's going on with the missing child that they have, what is going on with Void Queen slash Antara and why she hates humanity, um, what's going to happen with Tarek, is he going to eventually break free and rejoin the Rangers, is he going to reclaim his power as Void Knight, um, and because uh, there's footage for that in the Rio Soldier, like uh, one episode before he, um, and also like the... Uh, um, what's it called? The stage show, I guess, if they somehow. But the um, there was another little like seven minute little special thing they did too with not a, a memory of here memory of soulmates or something like that. Yeah, so they could do something. Who knows? Um, but I'm really interested in it. I like the Mega formations we've gotten. We finally got our like, two Ultra Zords. I don't know why they didn't make the, both Ultra Zords. The one was just um, the T Rex and the Terror Freeze, and then the other one was T Rex, Terror Freeze, and Moser Rex together. And he was scared to use it because last time they did, it ended up murdering you know everybody except for him and Ion. 
And they're like, well, let's not make that happen. Let's, you know, figure some things out, blah, blah, blah. So they stabilize it, and it doesn't kill them when they use it. So it's a nice little focus episode for Zato. <clears throat> um, but, uh, yeah, like I said, I'm really impressed with this. Um, I think that, you know, they really... Um, um, Simon Bennett and everybody there who's been working on the show have been doing a fantastic job. Um, I'm hoping to be pleasantly surprised with what's left in the back nine for uh, the rest of the season for Dino Fury. Um, I'm hoping to be, like I said, thrown, thrown off guard and surprised in general. Um, and, uh, yeah, I'm liking it so far. If you guys haven't watched it, now you have the entirety of season one and the first 11 of season two to watch, so get on it. <laughs> um, and, uh, yeah, so that'll probably do it for this. Like I said, probably strong 9 out of 10 there. Um, if I did miss anything, let me know in the comments and things you wanted me to talk about or focus on. I can definitely do that. Um, I tried to talk about most of the plots of the episodes, the bigger ones anyway. Um, if I missed one that was your favorite, let me know and I can do a separate video on just that if you wanted me to. Um, coming up soon, so I got this one done, um, I'll have my overall thought Zenkaiju video out pretty soon. Um, and then once that's done, um, I gotta also be watching this week. I'm gonna watch Down Brothers and get my review up for that as well. Um, but again, thank you guys so much for watching. And until next time, stay hooked on Henshin's and stay subscribed, please. More people should subscribe. That'd be great. Uh, and sharing and liking and all that and commenting. Okay, bye.